Hello traders, my name is Corey Mitchell and welcome to the Euro US Day Trading Course. A little bit about me, I'm a full-time trader since 2005. I originally started with a day trading firm. They provided me with capital and then I gave them a cut of my profits and I just traded their money for a living. And then after about six or seven years, I just decided to do it on my own and keep all the money and so I primarily focus on Forex day trading, swing trading. I kind of alternate between those two sometimes, just depending on uh, work-life balance and where, uh, where I need my time other ways. So I won't always day trade if you know I have something else in the morning. But I do always come back to it, and same with the swing trading. And then I also swing trade stocks. And I've called this adaptive price action strategies for crushing the Euro USD in two hours or less a day. I do like to keep my day trading confined to the morning, at least right now, as I said, with uh, my current life, it works well. I like to golf, I, I have a personal trainer, I like to uh, do some other things. So I like to keep that focus to the morning. So I have a, I have a certain routine that I go through and you can trade anytime you wish. Uh, you can trade for as long as you like, but uh, I've typically stuck to about an hour and a half to two hours for myself. And that's enough to provide some quality opportunities for the strategies that you're going to learn in this course. And this course, uh, this video is just going to cover exactly what's covered in the course. So basically it's a table of contents. The first thing we're going to cover is how to use this course. I would recommend just watching through the entire course at least once just to get an idea of the overall method. And most people won't do this. They'll start taking notes. They'll start thinking about things, asking questions. I'd encourage just watch through the entire course because a lot of it's going to come back full circle. It's a very comprehensive method where everything's working together and I wouldn't just pick a little piece out. Uh, once you've watched the whole thing, then go back and start picking apart you know, the parts that you don't understand, start taking notes, start working on the things that you wanna work on. But I'd watch through the whole course first. We're gonna briefly look at the Euro USD. It's the most volume, high volume pair, and it provides more than enough opportunities in a week, in a month, to provide loads of opportunity. So there's no need to trade anything else. Keep it simple, trade this for an hour and a half, two hours a day, whatever your day allows, and the Euro USD is all we need. We'll talk about brokers, spreads, and charting platforms. I have personal trading clients from all over the world who are trading with brokers in Canada, the US, uh, other parts of the world, and all of them have been able to all of them have been able to find brokers that you can utilize these strategies with. So as long as you have a broker with decent spreads and decent commissions, these strategies are available to you. And spreads are really important. So the lower the spread you can get, the better. Charting platforms, MetaTrader 4, MetaTrader 5 are all fine. Most brokers offer those. I'm not a huge fan of MetaTrader charts. I do use it for my trading but I don't actually use it for my charting. I prefer to have a trading view screen up with, uh, I like their charts a bit better, but that's totally personal uh, decision on my part. You don't need it. You can trade off MetaTrader. We'll talk about, uh, you know, all these things, brokers, spreads, charting platforms. Uh, we're gonna talk about when to trade and setting up charts. So I'll tell you because if you do pick up the course, you're gonna wanna know when these strategies are applicable. And they're best used between the German Open or the London Open. Germany occurs just before. So once Europe starts opening uh, up to the U.S. close, but I wouldn't trade it right up to the U.S. close, maybe about an hour or two hours before. So basically all through the London session, which goes into the U.S. session, and then during the U.S. US session. So if you're kind of in London business hours or you're in U.S. business hours, those are okay times to trade. We'll also talk about setting up your charts. I like to set my chart up in a specific way each day, uh, just based on average movements. We'll talk about that. How to practice and improve. Just watching a strategy video is not gonna make someone a good trader. You're actually gonna have to practice that, improve on that, 
And so we'll talk about how to do that. One of the, one of the most simple things to start out doing is to, where did I put it? Let me just pull up a slide here. So each week I publish something, uh, a weekly strategy and review. So these are on the main blog, tradethatswing.com, or if you go to Forex Day Trading Lessons, they'll all be listed there just to refine it down a little bit. And you can see for each week there's, you know, a little list. And there's also one for monthly. So let's click on one of these weekly ones. And you'll see that I've just included my screenshots for the week. So screenshots are a good way to start improving. And we'll talk about multiple ways to practice. This is kind of a later stage once you actually start taking trades. But there's just ways that you can start uh, to practice and improve. And taking screenshots of what you're doing during the day is a great way to start doing that. We'll talk about position sizing on the fly. Let's pull this up for a second. Let's click on one of these charts. So as a trade is potentially coming up, or we'll talk about all these strategies and what all these things mean. As, a, as the price action is unfolding, we know exactly when we're going to be getting into a trade. So we can start measuring out. Once this little red bar formed, I knew that if the price moved above the high of it, I was going to be getting into a trade. That gives me a minute, plus however long it takes for the price to move above it, to measure out this price wave. So let's say it was you know 1.7 pips. Then I'm adding on a little bit for the spread. So I know, okay, I have, a, I have approximately a two pip stop loss trade here. And, you know, we, it may end up being a tiny bit more if we get a little bit of slippage or something like that. But I know I have an approximate two pip stop loss trade. So I put in my, put in that stop loss into a position size calculator. I can see exactly what my position size is. I'll show you how to input that into MetaTrader and then also put out your stop loss and target all in a matter of seconds, really, so that you're always ready to go. And I call it position sizing on the fly because we're going to find out exactly how big our stop loss is. And that way we can risk the same amount. So I risk 1% of my account per trade. So that means a 2. Point, uh, on this trade, I made 2.7R. Since I was risking 1%, that means I made 2.74% on my account on that one little trade there. And this one was 2.53%, this one 2.48%. So about a 7.5% day, uh, just on these you know little trick, little quick trades here. And But being able to position size on the fly so that we are risking about 1%. You can see it's very slightly because I'll take my total profit for the trade in dollars, divide it by my account to get to see how much uh, my R was. So based on little things like stop loss, or I might make a tiny little error, maybe maybe this bar, uh, maybe I end up with a 2.3 pip stop loss instead of a 2 pip stop loss. Uh, that's that's going to affect the R slightly. We'll talk about that in the course, what that means and how to do this all. But it allows a constant across all these trades. So I'm always risking 1% and there's a very quick way to do this. And I'll show you how to do it. And it's just, yeah, position sizing on the fly. When not to trade. This is an area that's kind of neglected, I think, in trading because everyone's so eager to learn when to trade that the people who are teaching them don't teach them when not to trade. and the people who are learning how to trade just don't care because they think they should just be pounding keys all the time. And that is not how trading works. Really, if you think about it, it's about 99.6% of the time you're going to be doing nothing. That's assuming uh, you're trading for like two hours and you basically only have to click your mouse a couple times to put in a buy or sell order, especially since our stop loss goes in with it. So in terms of like actual key time, in a typical day like this, I have three trades. The total time on the keyboard typing in maybe like three seconds out of you know two hours. Uh, most of it's downtime. We're doing we're doing nothing except we'll talk about what to do in these times between trades that we stay focused and alert. 
Uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit, and it's covered in depth in the course. But activity is not a recipe for successful training. It's knowing when to pounce and when to hold back. So when not to trade is important, and I'll talk about my rules for when I don't trade. Pre-trading routine. If you want to get in the right mind frame for trading, you're going to want to have a pre-trading routine. Thinking about other areas in life, if you're doing something but you're extremely distracted, you're probably not going to do that as well. So if you're out on the golf course but you're super distracted, you're probably not going to play very well. If you're playing tennis but your mind's somewhere else, you're not going to play tennis very well. So we want to give ourselves the best chance of being in the right mind frame throughout the day. And our pre-training routine is going to allow us to do that by getting us centered, getting rid of those distracting thoughts. And lots of these other elements I'm going to discuss over here will also help with that. And so for the next hour and a half to two hours, we are focused and centered on our trading. Uh, we're calm. We're ready for what's going to happen. We're not agitated, anxious, super amped up. A lot of people mistakenly think that having a really elevated mood, really elevated mood is good for training. It's not. It's just as bad as having a super negative mood because a really amped up mood is going to make you want to hit keys and probably make lots of bad trades. An anxious kind of personality when you're or when you're about to start trading, an anxious energy is going to make you more apprehensive to take quality trades. So both are detrimental. And we want to find that balanced spot. And it doesn't mean becoming a Buddha. It just means we are getting ourselves in the best place to trade for the next hour, hour and a half, two hours. And we don't have to be, you know, 100% focused, totally rigid in our mind for that full two hours. There will be times, like here, where once this price hit my target and it was moving away, I can see, okay, it doesn't look like anything's going to set up right now. Uh, you know, take a few minutes for myself, go grab some water, come back, and then refocus. And, you know, then again, when there's, when there's none of our patterns are setting up, we can take a little mental break, but then it's getting in that mind frame of, okay, let's do that little pre-trade routine again. Let's get myself back in the game here. So that when the next trade comes up, I'm ready to pounce. We're going to cover strategies. So there's four of them. These are in order of, these ones all occur about the same amount, but the rounded tops and rounded bottoms occur the most, so I've put them first. And these are actually broken up. So there's four strategies, but the double, double pump variation is a little bit based on the double pump. So we have the rounded tops and bottoms, double pumps, double pump variations, and snapbacks. All these these ones, as I said, occur the most, but we definitely don't want to eliminate any of these. Um, you could probably trade off just these and do quite well for the month, but there is definitely profit opportunity in learning these. So there, there's something you would tack on. Uh, learn this one first, get used to, practice, improve on it, and then we'd add in the double pump, add in the double pump variation. Once you start getting used to those, then you add in the snap back. Bringing all the strategies together, this is a video that discusses how to view these in the real world as they occur because there might occasionally be a conflict or you might be in a rounded bottom trade, the price is moving up and all of a sudden a double pump occurs. So what do you do in that situation? What do you, what do, you do if you have maybe a rounded top and you've gone short? And now as you're in that trade, a rounded bottom occurs. There's going to be little conflicting signals that occur. And these aren't problems. They shouldn't be avoided or I'm not going to handle that situation, which I, I think a lot of books and stuff do because you're reading and it's like this strategy kind of conflicts with this one sometimes. What am I supposed to do? And it never talks about it. So... I want to discuss what happens when you have a conflict. What happens when you have a buy signal, a buy signal, and then you also get a sell signal a little bit later. And how do you juggle those? Do you stick with your original one? You're still in the trade. Maybe it's even making money. 
uh, do you get out of it? Do you jump in the new trade? And there are different ways to handle that situation. So we'll talk about bringing all these strategies together and just making them into a very comprehensive methods so that you feel in sync with the market. And I think that's really important. The, the patterns are, are patterns that we trade off of, but they're also telling us about the price action. That's, that's their real power is that they're just things that tend to occur when prices are moving within trends, when prices are reversing these things tend to occur. So we can use these to just assess how the price is moving and then we also make trades based on those. Alternative exit methods. To have alternative exit methods, I may as well tell you what the real exit method is and that's or the what happens on most of the trades and that's what I already touched on a little bit. We have these uh, 2. Point, close to 2.5R on all these trades and what that is is that I'm whatever you whatever you've decided to risk 1% 2% of your account I wouldn't risk 2% but 1% of your account half a percent of your account a hundred dollars per trade a thousand dollars per trade whatever it is we want to be risking this red represents our risk so this would maybe be a hundred dollars for you and it means that whatever that is, whatever this stop loss is that's worth $100, we're gonna multiply by 2.5. So that if, if this hits our stop loss, I lose $100. If it hits my target up here, I'm gonna make 250. In this case, you can see I made a little bit more, 2.9. And that will sometimes happen. Sometimes we'll make a little bit less too. This can happen because of position sizing uh, or uh, as I just said, alternative exit methods. So there, there are times when we're going to want to get out to a, get out of a trade early. One of the simplest examples of this would be we have our entry point and our target, and let's say a big news announcement was going to come up. So I have one of these right here, an economic calendar. You would look at this before you start trading, and if there's any euro USD big news coming out I have this set so that it's only the really high impact ones that show like three stars or like really high impact news I'm gonna get out of that so even though this trade might be doing really well if I know that news is coming out at seven o'clock I'm gonna get out of this at 658 or 657 just to be sure that I'm out of that trade a minute or so before the news hits so that'd be an example of uh, early exit or an alternative exit. And we have a couple other ones, like I talked about with the bringing the strategies together. Sometimes we'll have a conflicting signal. And if we're in a trade that's expected to drop, but all of a sudden we get a signal to go long, that could also, we would potentially get out of that first trade and get into the new trade and initiate a new trade. And we'll talk about when that would be appropriate and when it might be better to stick with your original trade, things like that. Very important, alternative exit methods. Win rate and reward to risk. So we've touched on this already. Let's bring it up one more time. So I'm always looking to make more on my winners than I would on my losers. And the reward to risk is probably the easiest way to become a good trader. Whereas most people try to think of win rate. They want to win all their trades or most of them. And it's really hard. You can improve on your win rate up to a certain amount, but once you get up to like 65, 70%, it's going to be harder to improve on your win rate because there's always going to be trades that just, you know, you enter and the price just goes against you. It just snaps back against you. No real opportunity to cut the loss. And that's that. There's you know nothing really to be done and those are gonna happen at least a few times out of ten so the win rate in a sense is capped in how much you can improve on it and once you're in that you know 50 60 percent you can make a lot of money and improving it incrementally will 
yeah, and improve a little bit, but it's going to be harder and harder to keep improving it once you're up into that, you know, 60, 65% area. But reward to risk, if we're making two and a half to one on our winning trades and we're winning 50, 60% of our trades, that's a huge reward to risk. And there'll be additional exercise that we can do to improve. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but it's easier to improve on this. So I actually started out years ago using a 1.5 to 1 reward to risk. And I just noticed then a couple years or a year of trading, you get the benefit of all this that, oh, I could probably use a 2 to 1. Like the price seems to run past my 1.5, 1.6 to 1 target quite often. And then I used a 2 to 1 for a long time and just kind of stayed with that. And then I realized again, like, I did a review and I'm like, man, the price, yeah, I, I would end up losing some trades because if I increase my target to 2.5 to 1, sometimes it won't get there. But if it gets there most of the time, that extra profit makes up for the one extra loss I might have. So the win rate might go down a tiny, tiny bit. But my reward to risk goes up and now I'm making 2.5 to 1 as opposed to years ago when I was only making 1.5 to 1. And the win rate stays pretty close to the same. So reward to risk is a huge thing and it's way better to focus on it. So you can almost find, this video is mostly focused on how to find ways to improve your own trading just based on these these ratios if you actually track these ratios and there's a let's see if i can find it here so i even included on trade that swing there's like a trade log which you can use to just track all sorts of things and you don't have to track them in here. You can do it like how I've done it. Uh, I just like doing these, these weekly things as well. So you can do the trade log, you can do this, you can upload them to a trade log trading journal site. Uh, like one is FX book, uh, my And you know, you can upload your trade history to them and they'll give you all sorts of stats and your reward to risk and your win rates and all that. But even just tracking it, you'll start to see where there are areas for improvement. And almost most of the errors that people make can be attributed to win rate or reward to risk. And so just having those instantly gives you some ways to start improving. Uh, if you know that you're cutting trades early and you can see that your reward to risk ends up being only 1.5 to one, then you know that by just leaving some of those trades alone, letting them hit your targets, your, your reward to risk is likely gonna improve. So you can improve your results that way. Tracking trades. So win rate, reward to risk, you're gonna have to track some of your trades. Like I said, uh, there's multiple ways to do this. If you keep the screenshots, at least you have a record and then you, know, you can write down your results, start looking at your reward to risk. Efficiency is, this so on each one of these things and i do this each week and yeah as long as my schedule doesn't change too much in terms of uh like i, I trade in the morning and i go to my personal trainer and then assuming some of those things don't change and i continue to do this uh, i'll post these weekly updates there may be times when i don't because i'm not trading but i do i do like posting these uh, when i'm actively trading so these say what the profit potential was 30 30.24 32.49 r and r is just a standardized risk we've talked a little bit about this so if you're risking one percent of your account per trade that means this week offered a 32 percent profit if you traded these strategies perfectly as i saw them and i'll occasionally go back through well not occasionally it's regimented each month i'll go back through the prior month and look at the charts from the prior month, uh, usually going back like two months. So, you know, if it's March, I'll go back to January. So that my eyes are fresh. I haven't seen those trades, those charts in a while. And I'll go through them again. And I'll often find there was actually a little bit more R profit potential because I missed a trade 
which I just didn't see at the time. And, but this is, at least at the time, what the opportunities that I saw. And so this gives me a benchmark. It says, okay, there's 32% of profit if I traded well. I don't include trades if they would have been, well, there are no real impossible trades, but if I had no concept of being able to see it at the time or there was no way I could have known a trade was coming, which doesn't happen, then I wouldn't include it. But, or if the price like just exploded in one direction and there was no time to react to it, then I won't include that trade because it, it actually physically wasn't even possible to get into it. But these are the trades that I see as legitimate opportunities based on the strategies as outlined in the course. So this was 32% weak. Notice here I've written down, I missed 9R due to missed trades, meaning profitable trades I didn't take. And then I lost about 0.6R due to other mistakes, meaning I took a trade I shouldn't have, or I stayed in a trade longer than I should have, something like that. So we can see 10R, so that's 10%. So a 32% week in this particular case actually ended up being a 20% week. The strategies gave me 30% of profit opportunity. I only capitalized on 20% of it. That's about a 66% efficiency. You want to know what your efficiency is. When you start out trading, it's probably going to be pretty low. It might be like 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. And our goal is to have most months up in the 80%, 90% efficiency. That's going to take some time. It's going to take some practice. But we want to get up there. And But even if you don't, at least we know that the profit potential is there. So at, if you're at 50%, you can still make... A decent return and uh, some months will be you know you'll nail it you'll nail pretty much all your trades for that week and you'll be at a hundred percent efficiency you, the strategies provided about 30 percent in potential or 15 percent in potential or whatever that week was and you got very close to that maybe a tiny bit more a tiny bit less and other weeks you'll just feel out of sync and you know you can see the trades play out but in real time you just didn't get them and so maybe you know you made five percent on a week where there was 25 percent of profit opportunity and that just shows that there was some opportunity there to improve and so what i like to do is you know we go into depth in the course but i'll just give myself one little thing to work on for the following week and spend some time on it, maybe on the weekend, do it like a tiny bit of mental work on it or whatever that strat, maybe if it's a, like a technical thing, you're having a issue with a certain pattern, just spend a little bit of time going through all your charts, seeing how it would work out, kind of practice, visualize it, do something to improve on that little problem area to try to increase your efficiency. Create your personal trading plan. This is a video that gives you some steps to start building your own plan because no one else can really create a trading plan other than you. Because a lot of trading plans stop at, I've written down my three strategies on some pieces of paper and I'm good to go. I'd, the best traders are going to take it beyond that. They are going to look at, they're going to include their pre-training routine in there. They're going to look at ways to really get themselves in the right mind space and keep themselves in the right mind space. Trading is about money. Money is required outside of trading. So money and trading affect our life. And our life can also affect our trading. So we want to build little partitions between our trading and our life and also work out what the synergies are. What are the, here's an example. If you're trading and doing really well, let's say you put 20,000 into the account and you're up to a hundred thousand dollars and that's a lot of money for you. You're starting to really think about it. You're like, that's a down payment on a new house. That's like, buy all new vehicles for all of us that's 
and you start thinking about it, and now that money is like real. It's on your mind, and you're thinking, what am I going to do with this? Or you treat it like nothing, and you try to ignore it, and maybe you blow it all. All these things have real impacts on our life. And so we don't want to like just blindly bash through our trading without thinking about our life and our goals. So a few things to include in your trading plan. And there's, I have a long list in here, but just a few to think about are, A, what are your, what are your actual goals from your trading? Is, are you going to compound your account? Is, is your goal to make your account as big as possible or is it monthly income? Because I have a lot of people who say they're going to come to trading because, you know, they just want a steady income. But then all of a sudden they're never pulling their money out and they're just trying to compound it like crazy. And now all of a sudden they're, you know, they have a, they have a bigger account balance. They don't know how to trade it. They're stressed out. They're... And, you know, that might not seem like a big problem, but if you're stressed out, you're not going to trade it well and you're going to end up giving it all back. So, you know, you might have traded your way up to 100000 but if you don't have the right mind frame and you start freaking out about it, you're probably going back to 20000 in a hurry. So we want to think, what's going to happen if, do I want to withdraw or do I want to compound or in what frequency? How am I going to make withdrawals? When am I going to do that? Am I going to do it each month no matter what? Am I going to do it when I hit little performance targets? Am I going to... What was I talking about? The... Oh yeah, your personal training plan. The... Yeah, so how am I going to navigate those times? What if I have a big winning streak? What if I have like a huge day where, you know, I maybe trade it a little longer, but there were just loads of opportunities and you're up like 20% on the day. What about if you have a huge losing day? I talk in the course that you should never lose more than three R in a day or like you really cap the daily amount you can lose. But let's say you just had, you went crazy. You went on tilt. That's a poker term for like when you're just super aggressive maybe you had a couple losses in your revenge trading to make it back and all of a sudden you're, you've lost like 15 percent in a day what do you do in those situations write that down now before it happens because when that happens to you when you've had a big day or you've had a big loss or your accounts at an insane level you never thought it was going to be at or it's at an insane low level you never thought it's going to be at your mind frame is going to be very different than the calm mind frame you're at now. And you may make a bad decision. So you want to have as much written down in your trading plan about these types of scenarios as possible so that you're just ready and you can go just do whatever you pre-described. So if you have a really good period, you know, okay, I'm pulling half of it out and I'm leaving the rest to compound. We're compounding it up to a certain amount. Once I get up to this, you know, if I hit 100K, I'm taking a one week break to discuss with my partner what we're gonna do with this money. Am I gonna keep trading it? And then you kind of recreate your trading plan again. What are my new goals? I have this amount of money. When am I gonna start withdrawing? When am I gonna compound? Those sorts of things that you have things set out because yeah, these are big decisions. You're also going to want to look at the partitions. As I mentioned, how are you going to keep your trading distraction free as possible? If you're constantly being bombarded by things where, you know, you can't really focus on your trading, you're not going to do very well. So how are you going to set, a time, set aside the proper amount of time to trade and do this well? How is your life going to be put on side for the time that you're trading? But also, how is your trading going to be put aside for when you're doing other things in your life? Most people come to trading, clients, whatever it is to me, asking for advice or just in comments I read, they come to training because they want to enjoy life, stop working, work a couple hours a day, and then go do other stuff that they enjoy. 
But what ends up happening to a lot of people is they have no boundaries on their trading between their trading and their life. And they end up sitting on their computer eight to 10 hours a day, not getting any sleep, unhealthy, not eating well. They're not doing any of the other things that they enjoyed doing before. It's basically like they've trading took over. They became obsessed. They got addicted. And we want to avoid that as much as possible. Yes, put in the time to become a good trader, but put some boundaries on it. Don't be checking your charts while you're on vacation, when you're supposed to be giving the other parts of yourself their time too. We're not just a trader. We are multiple parts that need different things. And so this course is comprehensive. It all kind of relates back to being able to trade well, creating your trading plan, all these other things fit into your trading plan, your life. Think about these things. How are they all going to fit into your trading plan? So that's just, uh, you know, some of the things to start thinking about in your trading plan, which go beyond just blah, blah. I'm going to trade this strategy from eight to nine, try to make as much money as possible. That's not a trading plan. That's, I don't know what that is, but you need to, it's a start. But you want to build on that so that you have clear mind, you have focused goals, you have clear intentions about what you're going to do in certain situations. You're clear about what you're going to do with this money, how you're going to grow it or how you're going to use it. And it doesn't matter. Some people like to compound. I don't really have, I do now a bit more. But through most of my trading career, I never had the luxury of compounding. People look and say, you make 30% a month. They add it all up and think, oh, you're, you've made $1 trillion. I, I, when you're a trader and that's your only income, most of it gets pulled out each month. So if you, you, know, if you start with a $20,000 account and make 30% in a month, that's only six grand. So you pull that out. That's your, that's your living. Uh, then maybe you slowly start to build it, or maybe you start trading, uh, swing trading. Now that brings in some money. So now your account's up to forty thousand. You're making thirty percent. Okay, now you're up to twelve grand a month, and you can leave some in there. And but yeah, how how how's how's that all going to work into your trading plan? Are you going to build wealth? Are you going to try to compound? Are you going to keep a separate income so that you can just compound? Are you going to just use trading as your income, in which case all your money is likely going to be pulled out each month, your profits. These are things to think about. How to always stay on top of the price action. This is really important because it ties into position sizing on the fly. It ties into our reward to risk. Let's look at this. You know, let's just look at one of these examples again. So Throughout the time I'm trading, I'm constantly commentating. This is how to stay on top of the price action, is commentating to yourself. It can be out loud in your, or in your head, it doesn't matter. But as the price action's unfolding, each price bar, we're talking through the price action. Okay, it's dropping. Maybe, maybe we don't need to talk through here. I just started trading. But I'll note to myself, okay, there's not a lot of movement here. Like each one of these is five pips. We've only moved like seven pips in the last hour so low movement but we are near the bottom and I don't mind trading rounded bottoms near the kind of bottom or range even if it's a little bit quieter day we did have more movement over here price is dropping we had this little pop-up we tried to go lower again but that didn't really go anywhere ah and we've we're starting to move up a little bit we've reached this prior swing high so no real trade yet uh, there's a possible double pump in here. I'm not going to take it because we're in such low movement. And that means my target would have to be like down here outside this range. And we're really just chopping sideways. I don't want to make that assumption that we're going to, you know, break way down here uh, just to hit my target. But if we start to move back up, we have a potential rounded bottom. Okay, the price is moving up. I know my trigger made a new swing high. So we do have a rounded bottom in effect. Now I'm just waiting for one price bar to move above the prior high of the price bar. Okay, we're still dropping this bar drop, this bar drop, this bar drop. Well, this little bar, I know each one of these, I'm measuring the size of the price wave so that I know what my potential stop loss is because I know that if the price moves above the top of this red bar here, I'm gonna go long. Now we have this little red bar. I know that if the price moves above the high of it, I'm gonna go long, so I measure it. 
Okay, that's 1.7 pips. I'm going to add a little bit for my spread. So I'm looking at about a 2 pip stop loss. I plug it into my position sizing calculator. I plug it into MetaTrader, 2 pip stop loss. Multiply that by 2.5, 5 pip target. So if the price moves above this, I know I'm jumping in, and boom. It does move above that little red bar. I'm triggered into the trade. Stop loss and target are automatically sent out. And then throughout that trade, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, uh, there's no reason for me to get out of this trade. I'm just going to let it hit my stop loss or target. The only reason I would get out of this trade is if news is coming up. There's no news coming up. The only other way is possibly a trade signal occurs in the opposite direction. None of that's occurred yet. Oh, and now we're at my target. That's commentating. It's talking through the price action so that you're ready for anything. And I, I'll give you all the things to think about. And it seems like a lot, but each one of these price bars is a minute. You can go through the entire list in a minute. And, you know, there's five, six, seven things to think about. And not really that much once you're used to it. And then you're just always ready. And then, oh, you're out of this one. Okay, this really starting to fade quick here. Oh, we just made a lower swing low. Okay, we have a little red bar. If we drop below the low of that, then we have a rounded top in effect. I'm going to go short. Ah, there it is. I already knew what my stop loss was. I just measured this bar. Plugged it into MetaTrader. Drop below, hit the market sell. In it, we're into the trade. That commentating is how we stay on top of the price action. And we don't have to do it for two hours. Like I said way back when we were talking about the pre-trade routine, we want to be in the right mind frame. Commentating helps us do that. But we don't have to be Buddhas. We don't have to do this for two hours. We don't need to be an auctioneer, kind of like I, I was exaggerating a little bit, talking super fast there. But that is our, that is the process. Just kind of like each bar that forms, we're talking to ourselves a little bit, saying... What would get me into a trade? What has to happen for that trade to take place? What nullifies that trade? I have a possibility coming up, and if the price drops below this point, that trade is no longer valid. Right now, we have no trade setups. I'm not going to click my keys. Because once we start doing nothing, that's often when you're just sitting there, that's often when you start hitting a key. And then a second later, you're like, what the hell did I just do? I didn't mean to take that trade, and then you're. But it's because we hadn't engaged, we hadn't told ourselves what to do. So then we have an action bias, or uh, maybe we're a little nervous, so we just stay away entirely and don't trade anything. So going through that commentating really just helps us stay on top of the price action. So in the course, I talk about how to go through and commentate to yourself so that you're always staying on top, and when to take little breaks we can see okay a trade's not going to sit up here for a little bit run and grab your glass of water take a little mental break breathe and then refocus once things start to come back additional exercises to improve these screenshots also super helpful for that i talk about multiple ways to or multiple practices to uh, improve there's just simple ones you can look at your entries your stop losses and your targets i'll give you a, a quick one just on profit targets so what you can do is, and I do this over many trades, not just a couple, but you can go through your trades and I can see, hmm, okay, I used a 2.5 to 1 reward to risk here. I could have added an extra pip on that. So 2.5 reward to risk plus 1 pip. And this one I was in for a long time. It just kind of oscillated around there, but eventually it went. My stop loss could have been an extra pip below and it would have hit it. Same with this one blew right through. So this one hit my stop loss, so I'm out of it with a loss anyway. That one doesn't affect my winning trades. Uh, this one I could have easily added on an extra pip. It blew through. This one could have easily added on an extra pip. It went well above. And what about this one? This one went, yep, well beyond my target. This one didn't hit my 2.5 to 1 and ended up being a loss anyway, so uh, it was a loser. In terms of winning trades, this one would have, I could have put an extra pip on that one instead of my target being here, add one pip to it, and it would easily have been hit. So we're starting to see a little pattern. So you could go through this, go through your charts, and see how 
you can improve on your reward to risk simply by doing that. I could have added an extra pip on all those trades. But what I would want to do is go through, let's say, 100 trades, add up, okay, I made 2.4R on this, or 2.5R on this, 2.5R on this. Could I have added an extra pip? And you'll start to see, and then you get add up kind of what your profit and loss would have been based on that extra pip added. And you may find that, ah, like there are a few trades. I think there was a day later. So this one blew right through. This one never made it, but there was a day, I think this week. Yeah, like things like this. Like this one just barely made it to my target. This one barely made it to the target. Uh, although I never got stopped out, so eventually it could have gone lower as well. So there will be trades like this where if you add in an extra pip, all of a sudden you don't get out of that trade and you lose. But if you could have added an extra pip on 10 trades and only lost on this one, this one probably only was a three pip risk. So you lose three pips, but if you could make an extra pip on 10 trades, does that make sense? You're only losing three pips but you could have made 10 pips extra on all those other winners that you had already made money on, but you could have made a tiny bit more. So you're actually up seven pips over those 10 trades plus this one loser, like 11 trades. That sort of thing, that type of thinking, just looking for, I've already set out, use the 2.5 to one reward to risk. It's solid. It's going to do well for you. But when you start to improve, or just looking at your own trades, that's just one example with the profit targets. You're also gonna to wanna to look at your entries. If, so for example, on this trade, the entry point's right above this little red bar, as soon as the price moves above it. This is a good entry here, where this one is, because it provides a nice small stop loss. It did allow us to hit our target with a fairly small move, even though it was still 2.5 to one. I didn't take this one, I wasn't quite logged in yet. But what would happen if you're a little bit late and all of a sudden you're entering at the end of this price bar? How does that change things? Instead of having a, let's just call this a two pip stop loss, now you're entering up here, your stop loss is down here. You have a four pip stop loss. On a two pip stop loss, to make two and a half times your money, you only need a five pip upward move. Pretty easy. The price can move five pips quite easy. What about on a four pip? If you have a four pip stop loss to make two and a half times your money, the price now needs to move 10 pips. Double what this person who got the better entry point. Just because you were a little late, now, the price needs to move 10 pips to compensate you for that risk because now you're entered late, your stop loss is way down here, your risk is way bigger than the other person who got in quickly. Looking at the entries, how close were you able to get to the ideal entry? That's another way to just practice and improve and notice, oh, maybe Corey did know what, is, what he was talking about. I'm just entering these all three pips too late and that's why they never hit my profit target because I have six pip stop losses on all these trades, which means they need to move a huge amount. Whereas if I entered correctly, my stop loss would have been three pips and the price only then needs to move seven and a half pips to get me out of my target, which it did, but it didn't move 12 pips, right? Because each, the price only moves so much. So the, the, tighter we can keep our stop loss but still within the parameters of the strategy so entering where we're supposed to stop loss where we're supposed to and target where we're supposed to the price will hit our 2.5 target quite often more than 50 percent of the time but if we're entering late if you know that's going to affect it so these are ways to start looking at improving your own trade so it's most people will just try to trade a strategy. They trade a few things. They're like, oh, this doesn't work. But have they really gone back and looked? Was their entry point where it was supposed to be? Was their target where it was supposed to be? Was their stop loss where it was supposed to be? And how could, once you know those things, how could I improve on them?
how could I have made a little bit of extra profit here? Now I'm, I'm making good money. I'm executing at a 60% win rate. My average profit is 2.5 to 1. Is there a way to extract a little bit more? Maybe you add another strategy. All this stuff can be used to improve on other strategies as well. So it doesn't matter if you even use mine. All this other stuff is really going to help you trade any strategy. So you can come up with your own, add them in. Maybe, maybe you have a smaller account. So you know I'm taking an average like three trades a day. You need maybe four or five to hit your income goals. You might need to come up with another strategy. You're still going to want to go through this process of how do you improve on it? Is your entry point right? Is your target point right? Is your stop loss point right? Is there a little bit of extra margin there to maybe improve your reward to risk just slightly? Maybe you can use 2.6 to 1 on most of your trades. Is that extra 0.1 gonna, on a bunch of trades going to compensate you for the odd one that ends up losing because of it? Maybe. Check it out. So that is the day trading course. That's what we're going to be going through. I'm really excited to have you join me. All the videos in the course have a comment section below so you can ask questions uh, to me or to other traders uh, who may be going through similar things as you, questions you may have, uh, feelings you may have. And so I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you join me. And until next time, happy trading.